Welcome, it's your host Amy from Panventer and I'm so, so sure I've captured your interest and sparked your imagination with that intro that you are so, so waiting to get inside this box. This is quite a big and weighty box from Visconti. And it's so weighty and I know that you guys are here for the details that I even use my kitchen scale to weigh this and it's two kilos. Don't tell my wife I've used the kitchen scale. Okay, jokes aside, this is quite impressive. This Visconti is part of some of the most amazing creations that come from recent past years from Visconti. And this kind of creations are some of my favorite pens from Visconti. Inside we have the Visconti Diadolus, launched in 2017. First of all, let me show you how this pen comes delivered. And I'm pretty sure I've opened it from the wrong end. This is what you get inside. A very, very big and hefty box. This is the presentation box. It's made out of wood. It's painted in blue. It has this very, very cool specks of silver inside this paint and we have real glass. And this is the logo of Visconti right here on the box. It's gorgeous. This is how it looks inside. We have the pen resting in that main tray area. I wanna remove the tray. You can use this too. And under the pen, you will find a warranty guide and certificate of authenticity plus the ID card of the font pen stating it's a limited edition, the material and all information that you need for the font pen. The box is important, but we are all here for the font pen. And this is the Visconti Diadolus. Amazing creation. Simply amazing. I'm going to keep it like so and give you a better view. I want to walk you through all of the details of this creation. Then I want to show you the size and proportions. We are going to go into a writing sample and in the end I will share some of my personal reflections regarding this pen. I want to start with some history facts first because you need to understand the inspiration behind this font pen. So first of all, the Adelos, the name. This is the name of a inventor, creator, in ancient Greece. Daedalus is the name of the creator of the labyrinth of King Minos in Crete. Crete is a small island of Greece, if I'm not mistaken, don't quote me on that. This person is known to be a very skillful inventor and creator. Another interesting fact about Daedalus is that when he finished the construction of the labyrinth, he was imprisoned by King Minos inside the labyrinth. And this is Greek mythology. That labyrinth was constructed in order to contain the Minotaur or the beast. And the Minotaur is a half man, half bull creature. For this fact, I had to do some research and I hope I'm not wrong. But from what I've read, actually the Minotaur, the beast, the half bull, half man creature is the son of the wife of King Minos. Actually, the King Minos was presented by the gods with a very beautiful uh, white bull, which he was supposed to sacrifice for the gods. And he actually loved it so much that he didn't sacrifice it. So his wife fell in love with the bull and you get the rest of the story. Actually, the famous Greek writer Homer wrote in his times that Greek people were referring to finely crafted objects as being diadela. So you get the idea. So his name was identified with finely crafted objects. So this is important because this is a fine crafted object, the Visconti Daedalus. Now that we got the history facts out of the way, let me show you some of the details of this amazing creation. And first of all, we are going to start with the finial of the fauna pen. On the finial, we have the symbol of the labyrinth, which is very interesting. It's laser engraved by Visconti, and this finial is not going to fit the MyPen system, so you cannot remove this finial to substitute it with something else, like in other Viscontis. And the entire trims of this fauna pen are made in sterling silver. I cannot make justice to this work of art and show you how finely crafted and how everything is fitting so well together. Moving further, we have the 
Ponte del Vecchio clip, which is iconic with Visconti. Again, this is made in sterling silver, the clip. It's so beautiful, it's hinged, you can pretty much clip it in your very expensive coat without damaging the coat or anything like this on the clip right here behind it. Usually on other Viscontis we have enamel and that is white or black or different colors but on this one we have a beautiful blue with sparkles inside. This is matching the material. On the cap we have a very interesting technique which is being used by Visconti for so much time and it's called the filigreen. They take the silver tube and make this cut out then they put this filigreen under it you can see through and get the material. This is a very very nice technique which Visconti mastered and there is a lot of fountains from Visconti using this technique but this does it so well and the silver goes so well with the blue. In the material you will get all sorts of sparkly silver dust and actually there is also swirls. They are very deep into the material and you can observe them if you look closely. Those add so much depth to this blue material. Visconti calls this material acryloid. It's a combination between acrylic and celluloid. Acryloid. It's so beautiful and I adore this material. I love it so so much. You have the labyrinth going all sorts of direction and meeting into this circles. You don't need a hint just to figure it out. It's about a labyrinth. So the inspiration behind this fountain pen is the labyrinth. Then we have right here under the clip we have Diadolus. This inscription is using the same technique like the one that we have on the clip. A combination between enamel which is made to resemble the other parts of the fountain pen. It's blue with silver dust. It goes so so well. If you look closely you can actually spot that there is two horns from the bull, the minotaur. Behind, right here, we have the hallmark for sterling silver. For all us OCD collectors of writing instruments, Visconti does something amazing. And no matter how you going to close the pen, you will always get the clip aligning with the Daedalus and also the bull that's on the barrel. Let's open the fountain pen and we're going to use three complete turns. This is not a hook safe lock mechanism, this is a screw cap. We are greeted by the nib. In 2017 Visconti launched this fountain pen equipped with a 23 karat palladium dream touch nib. On this nib we have the famous Visconti motif on the nib stamped, it's clean, it's sharp, it's flawless. This nib is powered by a ABS plastic feed and together with the nib are friction fitted inside a collar which forms the Visconti nib unit. Myself being a Visconti collector I can tell you that probably the best nibs that are on the market or the best nibs that money can buy on a Visconti is the 23 karat palladium dream touch nibs which are discontinued. I know they get a lot of bad rap but when they are adjusted to write perfectly there isn't anything out there that can match them. They are so so good and the point is that I know how to adjust them to write like that. The section is quite comfortable, it's not too thin. Actually the diameter of the section is 12 millimeters, not too big, not too small. It has a slight hourglass shape thinner in the middle with a little bit more material on both ends. This is very comfortable for a pen this big. You probably don't go well with a skinny section. I love it. I love how it sits in my hand. It's comfortable. For a pen this big, this is not a heavy fondant pen. It stands to the name. Daedalus finely crafted objects. Finely. Not five kilos weight, so only the box weighs that much, but you need that as for a presentation. Okay, moving further, we have the threads of the cap. Those are very, very finely integrated into the section. We don't have any sharp edges, they are very, very polished, and I can see why you 
cannot hold the front pen by those threads, nothing uncomfortable about them. The section transitions to the barrel through this ink window, which is so sublime. I love this ink windows. Although we have a semi-transparent material and we can actually spot the ink inside the barrel, I think it's nice to see the color of the ink because that window is transparent. So you actually see the level and also the color of the ink. We have no step ups those sharp step ups are not present here we have a very smooth transitions toward the barrel and the barrel of the fun pen features the same filigree technique like the cap if you thought the cap was interesting the barrel is the next level it's so so interesting and actually you can spot a little bit better the beauty of this material i hope the camera picks it up it's semi-transparent it has swirls and it has silver dust in this material and it's gorgeous in the middle we have the head of the minotaur features the same technique like the Daedalus inscription on the cap. The enamel work is done perfect, flawless. The shape of the barrel is straight, so we have no tapering, nothing whatsoever. The filigree motif of the barrel, which encapsulates the beautiful blue resin, is made using a machine, which I think it's a CNC, so you can actually spot a few minute, minute uh, tool marks if you look closely. And this is the point where the barrel ends right here and we have the piston knob starting. The piston knob is conic in shape. It starts to taper in towards the end finial right here. End finial is flat but also has a slight dome shape. On the flat surface we find the limited edition number of the Daedalus and this is pen number 076 out of 380. Let's analyze the filling system and we have a double reservoir power filler. The Visconti trademark filling system and to be honest I love this filling system from Visconti. I think it's very easy to operate, easy to clean. Any day of the week give me a power wrap to clean and don't give me a piston. I don't like to always screw in the piston in, out, in, out. But this one is very easy and I'm leaning towards this filling system as being one of my favorite ones. I think we are done with the details and I hope I've captured all of them in this video. It's time to go into a size comparison to put it side by side with different font bands and I'm gonna go through some of my personal Visconti font bands that I collect and you guys can observe that this font band is something in between so it's a little bit bigger than a homo sapiens but it's not as huge as for example the Visconti Speak Easy which is a massive creation from Visconti which resides in my personal fountain pen collection. Also it's not that weighty you can totally carry this fun pen with you and you can actually use it practical. Uh, it's not that big, it's not uncomfortable, it is not unbalanced although I would add that it is a little bit back heavy. So this is a fountain pen that although it's posting, I wouldn't recommend you to post this one because it's a lot more back heavy if you put a cap. I wanna show you the actual father of this fountain pen, which I think is, it's my favorite fountain pen of them all. This is the Visconti Watermark. And as you can see, the Visconti Daedalus is built on the same frame like the Visconti watermark. And the Visconti watermark till this day is my favorite fountain pen of them all. This is why I love this fountain pen, the Visconti Daedalus, so so much. Enough, let's check the size. Here we have the Visconti Daedalus standing next to other pen models. From left to right we have Visconti Opera Master Crystal, Visconti Homo Sapiens Jade, Visconti Daedalus, Visconti Medici and Visconti Speak Easy. The measurements of the fountain pen are capped 150 millimeters, uncapped 146 millimeters, posted 188 millimeters. The diameter of the grip section is 12 millimeters. The total weight of the font pen inked and capped is 59 grams and inked but uncapped is 34 grams. And here we go with the writing sample. We have the pen and this is the Visconti Daedalus. The ink is Visconti blue. 
I haven't inked the fountain pen. I left this very important ceremony for the new owner of this fountain pen. So it is uninked. I only dip it in some ink that I had on my desk, Visconti Blue, the nib. And this is the gorgeous 23 karat palladium dream touch. And this is the extra fine. Very few people have the opportunity to try these nibs and they are gorgeous. These are some of the best writing nibs that money can buy when adjusted properly. Now let's check the wetness test. And this is one pass. I would consider it a quite, quite wet, extra fine nib. Not a gusher, but still keeps the line to be an extra fine. And this is some nor normal figure of eights. It's a quite fine line, but it's very, very smooth. And just a hint of a feedback, nothing unpleasant, just a little, little bit due to the extra fine point. And let's apply some pressure, trying to flex and it does a spectacular job to offer a little bit of character to your writing if you apply some pressure. But I don't advise you to press too much on this extra fine, fine points, mediums, because they can very easily misalign while flexing. The tines become misaligned. Now, let me show you how it writes in some fast writing. And here we go with the famous sentence, the quick brown fox jumps. I am mean, considering jumping to the opportunity of owning this pen, if you ask me, over the lazy dog. Wow, spectacular nib. I simply love it it's fine it's enough wet it's balanced it has a hint of a feedback it's very smooth and this is from the combination of the material the craftsmanship the design of the nib and it's spectacular no matter how much time i spent trying to capture all of the details and relating them to you i cannot relate the writing experience but trust me it's that Nice. It's a shame that this 23 karat palladium dream touch nibs get so much bad rap about them. From my experience retailing Visconti's and also collecting them in my personal collection, I would say that from 40 nibs, 23 karat palladium dream touch nibs that I've tried and owned and write with them, I could say that at least two of them had some problems. One was serious, one was not so much. So I corrected both of them. Visconti Daedalus, beautiful creation. There's a lot of things to love regarding this pen. We have the material, which is stunning. Probably this is one of the best things that I like about this font pen, this material. Regarding this material, I hope I can pull this off, but I'm talking with Visconti regarding something, but we'll leave that for another video. The filigree is stunning. I can say that the filigree is very nice to the touch. It adds a lot of texture to the font pen. You actually expect very smooth surface when you hold the font pen, but when you hold this one, you actually feel the texture of the filigree. I wouldn't recommend you getting this font pen and uh, trying to fit it every single day inside a pen sleeve, like so. That filigree will actually catch the inner parts of that pen sleeve, so avoid that. I would dare to say that this font pen is much more practical than a very limited edition. Actually, this font pen, you can use it as a daily writer. For example, this Conte Speak Easy is so, so heavy that you can basically need to stop writing after just a few sentences or if you are a champion like me, you can maybe go a page, but nothing more. It gets your hand to be crampy and it's not pleasant. The Daedalus is well balanced, his weight is evenly distributed and I think this is 
combining elegance, high-end luxury writing instrument with practicality. So it's a good concept. This is kind of it. And another factor that I wanted to point out is that I was lucky enough to find three of them in this county, all with the original box, the one that was offered in. Two of them are out of the stock. If you're interested in owning this one, the last one that we have in stock, down below you'll find the link, go there, choose the nib that you like. For the extra fine 23 karat palladium dream touch nib, you've seen the writing sample, that is how it's writing out of the box. So there is no need for adjustment. For 18 karat gold, leave that to me, write in an email what is that you're looking for in your writing experience with the Daedalus and I'll be sure to adjust that nib according to your specifications. Well, I think this is it. If you like this fountain pen, if you don't, comment down below, let me know your opinion regarding all of the features and that's it. Thank you for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did so, give it a thumbs up, this will help me a lot. Also, if you want to support me, please subscribe to the Penventure YouTube channel by clicking here and turn the notification bell on. And if you want to see more of my content, you have this video, click on it and enjoy. My name is Amy and I look forward to seeing you next video. Take care, bye bye.